<laughs> good morning, everybody. It's good to have you in the house. Uh, you'll notice that I have a few announcements for you. In your bulletin is one of these cute little blue sheets. Now, you are allowed to list more than one, but I want you to know that what you say, the why on here, could convince me to add this to our service, which is going to be on the 29th. On the 29th, we're having one service. Everybody say one service at 10 o'clock, and that's on the 29th. That's going to be that's going to be followed by a potluck, and you are to bring sides and desserts, and we're going to provide chicken. It's a time for us to get together and to share some fellowship. It's the fifth Sunday. Please make sure you fill these out and either leave them up on the corner of the chancel area or hand them to me, and I'll make sure that you get your Kathy Forrest Hood uh, two, two submissions. So please make sure you submit that because that'll be a part of our, the one that gets the most vote is the one that we're going to um, end up putting in there. Also, if you are a key holder, in other words, if you have a key to the doors in the church, we are asking, the trustees are asking that you let the office know. Now, let me tell you why. We're not going to take your key away, but we don't want you to get arrested. Let me explain. We're looking at putting the security system on, and when we do that, an alarm goes directly to the police office. And so we don't want you to come in and the alarm to go off and then the cops come and say, stick them up. So if we know that you have a key, we can train you how to use the alarm so you don't get arrested. I can just see it in the papers. Lawlessness abounds at Trinity United Methodist Church. We don't want that to happen. So please make sure you let the office know that you have a key so we can make sure you're on the list to train. We also have a blood drive on Monday, May 2nd, which is tomorrow. Um, we have graduation Sunday coming up. If you have someone who is graduating from any type of program, like a master's program or whatever, and you would like them to be honored, please let us know. Uh, Christina put a thank you note in there, and she wants you to just know how much she appreciates working with us. She did a wonderful Facebook post about how uh, beautiful that was and what a gift it has been for her to be here. Uh, my last announcement is one for the new members class. We have a couple of people who are going to be doing a new members class. If you're somebody who's been attending and you are not someone who is a member of the church but you want to be a member or you want to know the difference between member and just attending, please come. It will begin on May 15th at 10 o'clock. And we will have four classes. We will be missing the 29th. So if you're not going to be here, that doesn't need to be a part. But we'll do two in May and two in June. So we just uh, allow you to see that. Uh, I have one more announcement that Marsha's going to give us. So Marsha, if you please come forward. You need a mic. Let's see. Go grab one of those mics and tell Jimmy what number you are. I know, but... <laughs> But some of us have hearing aids, and we need help. Uh, on behalf of Staff Parish, I have several very exciting announcements. And the first is that Tricia will be back with us uh, another, for another year. So we have, we have been so truly blessed by the last five years, and we're very excited to have another year in ministry with Tricia. And my second very exciting announcement is, will you stand up? This is Christina Pond. She has been hired and started Wednesday as our new director of music. Christina comes to us from both Louisiana and Pennsylvania, I mean, and uh, Mississippi. And uh, we have prayed long and hard for her, and she has come a long, far away. <laughs> and so... I hope you will each join me in our in personal commitments and a commitment as a church to do everything you can in your power in prayer to make this the perfect fit for Christina. We're so excited to have her. And my third is to Julie. Will you stand up, please? Julie has very graciously given of her time 
and her talent and demonstrated her amazing love for this church uh, uh, in leading the chancel choir in, in all this time. And we so appreciate uh, that, that beautiful gift you've given us. And we're very excited, I think, to say that she will continue to be in the choir. And um, so we, we, just are, we are just doubly blessed there as well. And so um, with that, uh, I'll turn it back over. But I have to say this has been a good week for Staff Parish <laughs> and this Amen. church. Amen. Now let us center ourselves and focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. All the people say amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we share together our call to worship. Let us make human beings in our image, said God, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. Beloved, we are God's creation. Therefore, let us worship our Creator. Oh God, as we come today, we thank you that we're not star stuff, but that we have been blessed by your hand, that you have blown into us your very breath and that you call us your own. Come today and be glorified in and through our song, through the word, and through the table as we share together the blessing of Christ within. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus and all the people say amen. Our opening hymn of praise is How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
all the people say amen. amen. One of my favorite songs. Not going to be on the list, though. <laughs> uh, would you please remain standing as we share together the affirmation of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
Today we're beginning a new series. It's called John's Jesus. And in this series, we're going to be looking at who you believe Jesus to be. Let us begin by reading his word, and these words will be very familiar to you because they sound like Genesis. Let's begin. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God. Those who were born, not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of a man, but of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. Lord, sometimes in our world, we are so fast. We get so caught up in so much that we miss the truth of who we are and whose we are. This morning, I come as one who feels like they are on the treadmill of life. And yet, I know without your ruach, your breath, I have nothing, I can be nothing, and I will be able to share nothing. So I pray that you would help me to be still so that I might know, cognitively know, spiritually know, deep in the core of my being know that you are God. I pray the same for those who are gathered today that as we take this time, we might truly focus on your word and what it means to see you as our creator, not to get lost in the world, but to be those who understand, truly understand that we are yours. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray and all of the people say amen. Once upon a time, there was an atheist, and he was walking in the the woods admiring all the accidents that evolution had created. He thought it was majestic. He loved the trees. He loved the rivers. He loved the beautiful animals, and he said to himself, oh, what a beautiful world we live in. That was until he turned and he looked and he saw the rustling in the bushes. And when he did, out came a seven-foot grizzly bear. The grizzly bear started charging him and he started to run. He ran as fast as he could down the path. As he looked over the shoulder, the grizzly bear was gaining on him. He ran faster and faster. Tears began to come out of his eyes. And as he looked, the bear was even closer and his heart was pounding. And all of a sudden he tripped and he fell on the ground. At which moment he cried out, oh God, help me. The whole world stood still. The brook stopped running, the breeze stopped blowing, and a big bright light came out of the sky. And a voice said, 
You deny my existence for all these years. You have taught others that I don't exist. And you even credit my creation to some cosmic accident. And now you expect me to help you in the midst of this pandemic? Am I now to count you as a believer? The atheist looked directly into the light and said, you know, I would feel like a hypocrite to become a Christian at this point in my life, but perhaps you can make the bear a Christian. At which point the bear took his paw, which he was ready to strike the man with, put it together with his other paw and said, for these gifts, I give you thanks, God, and for this meal, amen. Beloved. Do you see Jesus as your creator? Do you see God as your creator? When you look at the world, who created the world? John's gospel was written for a specific purpose, and it says that we might believe. In this gospel are many things that we're called to believe in, that Jesus is our creator, that he is our savior, our healer, the miracle of God He is the one who is the holy fire. He is the reason we believe. So in this new series that we're beginning, we're going to be looking at the questions in our beliefs so that we might have insight on our relationship with Jesus. Today we start in the prologue, or in the beginning, words sound familiar, of John, so we can answer the first question, is Jesus your creator? Not the creator, but your creator. Our text begins with familiar words. It says, in the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And this echoes, you can hear that Genesis 1 through 3 passage right there in the very beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, the heavens and the earth were created by God. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God spoke. God said, let there be light, and there was light. In this Genesis picture, we see the Trinity in full view. We see God the Father as he is present in the midst of a chaotic place. We see Jesus, the word that will speak and the light that will come. And we see the Spirit hovering over the waters. In John's prologue, we see a similar picture. As John says... In the beginning was the Word. There is Jesus. In the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. In this picture, we begin to see that this is a story that begins in Genesis and goes all the way to Revelation. It's not a new story when it hits the Gospels. What it is, is it is a a ribbon of blood that runs from the very beginning to the very end. It is God's word that is present with us. It is the understanding of creation with us, in us, and about us. It is the beginning. It is not referring to a specific moment of time, but it is assuming a timeless eternity and the creative order of the Trinity, the three in one. Word in John's passage is a Greek word. It's called logos. Say that word with me. And it is loaded with so many meanings. I'm just going to share two with you. First, it means that the word that was spoken is a meaningful word. It's not just a sound. I know many of you listen to me preach, and when you leave, It was just the Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. And we will ask later, well, what did you learn at church today? Well, um, I think it was something about Jesus. 
It is a word that invokes meaning. It is a word that resonates with personality and then the deep core of our being. It is a word that brings a blessing and an understanding. It is a word that comes and shows us a relationship with us and Jesus. It is in this place that we begin to see the word that is made flesh and enfleshed in us. The word also tells us that logos is the creative power power. It says, by the word, the logos of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath, you remember this, the ruach, the wind breath spirit that we talked about when God took the ground and he formed the clay and he blew into it his breath, life. This word in Psalm 36 says, and the starry host by the breath the ruach of his mouth. In Genesis, we see the same thing as the spirit is hovering over the waters and as the word speaks, as Jesus speaks, and as the light comes into being. It is in that place that we see the creation of God. In Psalm 139, it says it this way. God created your inmost being. He knit you together in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And all the days were ordained for you before one of them was written in the book. The book. The book. God's purpose for you. It is in this place that we see that God creates us. Before we're even born, we understand that that creation is a part of who we are. We are created in his image. How many of you have ever seen the birth of a child or experienced that? When that child comes forth, though it is created there, it is not until they actually breathe in that breath <laughs> that you know there's life there. It is that breath, that breath that comes in that allows us to know that the word will come forth from them. Do you see where I'm going there? It is that ruach that comes and allows us to understand that we have been created and that we are being recreated as the image if we understand that, that covenantal union that we have, the, the design that we have been created in God's image, that we are recreated as we receive his spirit. I have a couple of questions that I want you to answer as we begin this. Do you know this John's Jesus? Think about that a minute. Who is Jesus to you? Is he one who speaks meaning into your life? Is he one that gives you breath? Does he dwell in you, and do you understand because he dwells in you, you have a purpose and a meaning? You're not just, as Carl Sagan says, star stuff. You're not just something that's been morphed from a tadpole that was in the water. You are created by God. Now, after John tells that through Jesus, his logos, that all things are made, and without him nothing was made. He said that he, Jesus, was life. And life was the light of all mankind. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word there is Zoe. Say Zoe with me. Zoe. And what it means is something that is both physical and spiritually alive. When you look at the creation story, the spirit was hovering over the waters and God spoke and the light came to being. And as they continued to create that, it became something where they began to see order come about. Zoe is life. It's mentioned 36 times in John's gospel alone, but it means that with that understanding of God and God's purpose, him coming as life to us, that it, it, we are made in his power and we are created and we become whole. We become complete. And until we have that peace in our life, we're missing something. 
the one who lives a Christless life, exist, but they are not really those who are full of life. Jesus is the only person who can create that life and bring us into the place where we have purpose and meaning. He is the one that sets us free from things that bring death, like condemnation and sin and fear and brokenness. He is the one that has created us that we might have life and life abundantly. Through our sin... We separate ourselves from God, and we exist to exist, exist in the light of his love. But God sent Jesus, his one and only son, that we might know real life through the sacrifice, through this new life. He has created it to all and has chosen to give us this gift of life. But we have a choice. It's called free will. Like I said last week on Jesus in that road to Emmaus, if they had not invited him to come in, he probably would have kept on walking. Walk on by. You know that song, right? He would have walked on by. Because we need to invite him in our lives that we might have that place. It is a gift we choose to open up. That's why God sent John, because some of us are a little thick. He sent John to say, hey, look, I see the light. Do you see the light? I am a witness, and I'm testifying to the light so that you might believe in him, not me. I must become less that you might become more. I need for you to hear this word, because if you don't become and understand this word, you will not have life. And I need to let you know that I am a witness to the light. And if you don't have the light, you'll be living in the darkness. The word witness here is distinctly Johannine, which just means it's in John's gospel and no other place. It's a witness about a serious thing. It's a witness that says, this is where I stand. I'm not going to move from it because it's truth. And I know the truth will set me free. This is where I stand. I believe, and therefore, I'm going to stand in this place. This is what I choose, and I'm not going to waver from it. There's no neutral ground when you are a true witness of the light. John came to be a witness to the truth and prepare us to receive that light in the gospel Open our eyes, O oh God, that we might see. Now this true light that gives light to everyone came into the world, and it was Jesus. He came into the world, and here we see that there were some who did not receive him, did not understand him, did not recognize him. There were some who came to that place and did not receive the true light. The word there is anathenos. And what it means is something that's true, that's not false or unreal. Christ came that we might see. Now, how many of you are getting more mature? How many of you need large print Bibles? <laughs> I was at a retreat this last weekend, and... Uh, I was opening up the Bible, and it was a place where a lot of kids are, and the writing was so small, I went, oh, my gosh. And so I had to put it into the light so I could see it. The light illuminated enough that I might be able to see it and read the truth. It does say, however, Christ does not illumine everyone. He only illumines those who are willing, free will, choose for him to come in and shine that light in their lives. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the truth of Christ sets us free. But we have to walk in that light. We see in this that in the truth of the world today, there's people who do not walk in the light. Can I have an amen? 
Just pick up the newspaper, just look at the news, and you see there's a lot of people who are the false prophets, the fake self-reported saviors. If you do it this way, this is going to happen. If you, you know, do this thing in your life, everything's going to be good. The world here refers to the court, current organization or culture that we live in. In contrast to this, and in Genesis, Jesus comes and brings order, his order, his spiritual order. So we can live in the world and in its chaos, or we can choose to live in the world that Jesus has created for a purpose for us. So as we understand that and we get to understand that truth, we become those who begin to know him and are created in his image. But many in our world today do choose to be, I call them homo sapien animals, and live in that state of mind. In the summer of 2005, the London Zoo posted a sign in front of their newest exhibit, and it read this. Warning, humans in their natural environment. They had done a survey and got eight people who wanted to live in a natural environment who believed that human beings were nothing more than homo sapiens. These human captives won the contest they were in their little environment, some of them sunning on the rock, others playing board games, waving to spectators. And on the sign read, these are human beings. Talked about their species, their diet, their habitat, their world distribution, and their threats on the world we live in. Now, the goal of the exhibit by Polly Willis was so that they would be seen as nothing more than primates. Tom Mahoney, one of the spectators and participants in it, said, a lot of people think that humans are more important than animals, but we're not that special. That is the difference between someone who knows they have been created by God, and they are made in God's image, and those who do not. Do you believe that Christ is your creator? Are you made in his image? Are you willing to receive and accept the truth in your life? If you do, you're going to live differently. He says, then God, who, to whom all who receive him or believe in him, are those who will be called the children of God. How many of you had a mom or dad who said, you're a, you're a such and such, I'm a McCoy, and you better make me proud of it? I've got an identity. I've got a purpose. I've got a meaning. It is in this place that I understand that I am a part of this family of God. When we believe, we become sons and daughters of the Creator King. We accept the gift of life that Jesus gives us, the Ruach, the wind breath spirit that blows into us our life, and we no longer know that creation exists. We know that creation exists, and we are His creation. So as we get to that place where we begin to know that, feel that presence and the gift that he offers us today, we know that we are a child of God. But that's a choice. Remember, the question is, do you want to be a child of God and receive that new birth in him today? This is a relationship, a spiritual relationship. As he says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And if you're not born again, you're walking in the darkness. In 2 Corinthians, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, accepts Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone away and the new is here. Let me give you a word picture. There was a London businessman, 
and he was looking for a place to put his business. And he found a really nice warehouse. It was really beautiful, but the vandals had come in. They had broken windows. They had marked up the doors. It, it looked like a shambles. There were rats and all sorts of things in it. And as he was showing the property, um, uh, the, the real estate agent was showing the property, he says, oh, well, don't worry about the broken windows and, and the doors and, and, and the, you know, the pests. We'll, we'll make sure all of that's gone and we'll fix everything. He says, oh, no, don't do that. They looked at him like he was crazy. He says, no, mm -mm. I don't want you to fix what's here. I'm going to knock it all down and I'm going to start from the foundation. You see, when we understand that Christ is the creator in our lives, the old is gone and the new comes. We're on the rock, and he starts from the foundation, and he wipes away all that old stuff. He gets rid of all the rodents. He gets rid of all the trash, and he brings in a new understanding of who we are. The question is, will we give him permission to build? Or are we having a hard time letting go of our trash? Are you willing to let God take the trash out? Are you willing to let Jesus recreate you? So what does it mean to be a new creation? Paul tells us that all believers who have died in Christ no longer live for self. Our lives are no longer worldly, they are spiritual and they abide in him. Our death, that old sin nature, is nailed to the cross, it is buried with him, and we rise again with Jesus into a new way of life. It means the old stuff has passed away, it means to the old nature, the pride, the arrogance, the love of sin, the reliance on our own selves and our formal opinions and our former opinions, habits and passions are no more. And the new has come. We put off the old. And we allow Jesus to come and recreate us into those who are righteous and holy in his sight. Beloved, do you believe that Jesus is your creator? Do you live as if he has made you new? If not, as you come to the table today, I invite you to take a step a little bit deeper. Commitment, allowing the blood of his nourishment and his broken body to make you new. Let us pray. Father God, we come into this holy place today. And we're kind of afraid if we knock down the building that we're not going to have everything that we really liked in our little comfortable space. <laughs> and yet when we look at it, we realize it's just trash. So come and recreate in us. Take away the old and bring forth the new. As we come to the table today, help us to see that it is you and us that makes the difference. Show us, creator God, this new place in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Beloved, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, hear this good news. Christ died while we were walking in the darkness. He died while we were sinners and still are. And that proves God's love for us. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you have been recreated and forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As we share communion today, if you're online, we invite you to go get some crackers or some sort of bread and some juice. Uh, if you are someone who cannot come up to the table, uh, we are going to be handing out elements, but there's some of you that may have a hard time walking. If you are and you don't want to come kneel or even stand at the rail, we invite you to uh, when it comes that time, raise your hand, and Terry will bring you an element uh, so that you might be able to partake right there in your seat. We have started coming back to the rail because there was many people who felt it was more intimate. Um, and I know it's, it's hard to open those little things, but we still feel because of the way COVID is, we still need to sit, stay safe there. So that's what I'm going to, that's sort of my, my walking orders as we go to the ward and table. Dearly beloved, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a joyful and awesome thing, O oh God, to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, who are walking in that light, we come to praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yes, holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. It was by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, that you gave birth to your church, that you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made a new covenant with us by the water and the spirit. On the night in which the Lord Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the fourth cup, and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sin. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living, light-filled sacrifices in union with Christ offering for us as our lives proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O God, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we might be the body of Christ, redeemed by your precious blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in that final victory and we get to share together at the heavenly banquet. By your spirit, make us one. By your spirit, shine your light. By your spirit, bring forth the understanding that we need to have. And we pray this all through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church. For all honor and glory and power are yours, Almighty Father. And all the people say amen. Before we share communion uh, and go into the Lord's Prayer, I want to tell you that uh, we have a couple of prayer requests that we need to be looking at. I do not know your brother's name. Linda, Earl um, was struggling, and they believe that he has, I'm getting him mixed up with Laurie. It wasn't a stroke. It was congestive heart failure, correct? They, yeah, they took him to the hospital early this morning. 
Uh, Laurie Gibbons, uh, who was in a rehab this morning, was taken to um, Riverside, back to Riverside, because she had a stroke. So we need to be keeping both of them in prayer. We do have a praise God, um, because Walter walked 22 steps. Is that what you said, Terry? 22 steps. And he had the surgery. The surgery went well, and now he's walking. So we, that's a praise to the Lord. So we need to be praying for them. We need to ask God to incorporate them. We're going to take a moment of prayer, just lift up a few names as right before we come to the table. Let's, yes. Okay, so we need to add Amelia to that. Okay. All right, are you ready? Let's go to Jesus. Father, your word says that we should boldly come into the throne room. That we should lay our concerns at your feet. And that you should bring to us an understanding as we submit to you the things that are on our hearts. So we come today as those who are offering the petitions in our hearts. We pray for Miss Amelia right now. Whatever's going on with her body, Lord, that you would give wisdom to those who are attending her, that you would help her to know that you're present with her, that she would not be afraid. I pray for John as he is in the hospital and as Laurie is there. And, and Lord, we ask for wisdom for her doctors that they might be able to shine that light and figure out what's going on with her and where does this stroke come from. And you might send forth your healing. And Father, we pray for Linda's brother that you would give wisdom to his doctors that they might be able to remove that fluid that's around the heart. We thank you, Lord, for the victories that you have brought this week, the places of healing, the ways that you're moving in our lives, the ways that you're bringing us closer. We ask, Lord, that you would be present with those who are struggling with issues in their home life, issues in their marriage, issues with their children, and children who have issues with us. Grant us your grace, oh God. We so miss. So many times. Shine your light in those situations. We pray all these things and the prayers that are on our hearts in the name of Jesus and the one who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all the people say, amen. We now invite you to come forward. Curtis, if you would come help me, I'd appreciate it. You can take the up the road side. And we're going to invite you to come forward. We're going to invite the choir to come on out first, if you would. And um, then come forward as you are fed, you know, as, as it led. We'll let you be your own usher this morning. But as you feel led to come. Thank you. If you're online today, we invite you to, to take your bread and to break it. It is the body of Christ that has been broken for you. And then to take your juice. This is the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed for you. Take and eat and drink in the bounty of the Lord. Amen.
bounty upon you is great. Allow that bounty to flow in and through you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. It was that offering of gift of grace that he shows us on the cross at Calvary. It was that place that he took his blood and washed us clean. It was through the death and resurrection and then ascension into God's glory that he brought his new life to us. What a gift of grace we have received. Oh, the wonderful love of Jesus. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery and the way that you revealed yourself through Jesus Christ. Thank you for bringing order into our world, that we might know that we are your creation, that we have been blessed by your presence. Shine the light on the dark places that we need to give over to you, that we might be fully, fully yours. It is in the name of Jesus we give thanks, and all the people say, amen. Our closing song this morning is one that I love, a two. And if you put it on there, if you put the first one on there, I guess we'll accept it. <laughs> to God be the glory, would you please stand and let us sing our closing hymn, number 98. <laughs>
Dearly beloved, do you know that you are created by God? Do you know that his very breath is in you? Yes? 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 Then go forward in the love, in the creation that God has made you. Allow his light to shine in and through you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all the people say, amen. Let it be. Thank you.